How many off-roaders do you really need? If you ask Toyota, the answer is more. So it doesn't surprise that the Japanese car maker is working on another SUV, designed primarily for off-roading. The company that's famous for making some of the toughest off-roaders around is about to make enthusiasts happy with another capable vehicle. This time, it's about a smaller package. This time, it's about the all-new Toyota Landhopper, the ultimate compact SUV. Corolla, Camry, Prius, Super Toyota has so many iconic models in its portfolio, but for off-road enthusiasts, Toyota is mostly about the Land Cruiser. The iconic nameplate has been in use for over seven decades. During that time, Toyota earned the reputation of the world's toughest SUV, an SUV that's able to take you to any point on the planet, but unlike some other off-roaders, can bring you back home as well. In the last several decades, since the moment Toyota decided to offer both off-road and comfort-oriented models, the Land Cruiser is more than just a model. It is a family, a family that consists of a couple of different models that share the nameplate. Today, there are three Land Cruisers on offer, starting from the biggest and most luxurious 300 series, which is sold primarily in the Middle East, but in a few more parts of the world as well. The next one is the Land Cruiser Prado, which has just received a full redesign and now comes as the 250 series. This model is sold all around the globe, including North America, where it replaced the oversized and overpriced 200 series. And while these two belong to the so-called group of comfort-oriented models, there is also the 70 series model, a model that has been in production for nearly four decades and which remains the ultimate off-road machine a model that rules the toughest parts of Africa, Asia, South America, and Australia. Now it is time for something smaller, something that can be sold around the world and serve not just as a capable off-roader, but also a great option for customers with specific lifestyles. We are talking about the compact SUV that could be called the Land Hopper, but might use a different moniker as well. As we've just mentioned, the new small SUV will be a new member of the Land Cruiser family, but due to its size and possibly car-based design, it will probably come with a slightly altered name. We already mentioned the Land Hopper name, but that's not the only moniker that's associated with Toyota's new compact SUV. Namely, although the Land Hopper trademark has been secured, Toyota decided to use it for a new electric bike. Of course, it can be used for the new SUV as well, but some sources also suggest different names. For example, there is the Compact Cruiser name, which was previously linked to the EV concept. While we wouldn't exclude the possibility of seeing the legendary FJ Cruiser nameplate revived, or some of its variants, such as the FC Cruiser. Finally, we could see a typical alphanumeric designation, whereas a small SUV like this could come as the Land Cruiser 50 or something like that. For the purpose of this video, we will use the Land Hopper name. Of course, the most distinguishing thing about the Land Hopper will be the size. This SUV will be the smallest member of the Land Cruiser family, and we presume that the size and proportions are about to be similar to the potentially key rivals, the two-door versions of Jeep Wrangler and Ford Bronco. The latter is around 173 inches long, 74 inches wide, and 71 inches high. So these are the numbers experts are suggesting. Moreover, some sources already came up with the measurements, suggesting that the new SUV will feature 177 inches in length, 71 inches in width, and 73 inches in height. And while they sound pretty realistic, we suggest you take them with a bit of reserve. For now, Toyota's policy is to keep details about the new SUV a secret, so there aren't many things to refer to. Practically, all we've seen so far is a teaser image during the Land Cruiser 250 presentation. But even that image doesn't show much. Basically, all we can see is a contour of a boxy SUV with massive wheels and things like high ground clearance and short overhangs. That's something you would expect from every off-roader so we could agree that the teaser image didn't show anything specific. On the other hand, most experts and enthusiasts point out the indicative side of this image, suggesting that the exterior styling could be pretty similar to the compact cruiser concept we saw in 2022. That concept was imagined as an EV, but the production version could involve different approaches regarding powertrain as well. In any case, we are all hoping for the same result, which means a compact and boxy design with high ground clearance, massive tires, rugged bumpers, and lots of body cladding 
all combined with the design language that blends futuristic and retro aesthetics to stand out from the crowd. While the exterior design approach is pretty clear, there's a bit of a mystery under the skin. Normally, you would expect a proper member of the Land Cruiser family to feature a classic body-on-frame platform. That's what many sources suggest for the new Land Hooper. But does a small SUV really need such a rugged chassis? Can it provide decent off-road capabilities without being too heavy? Can it ride on a unibody platform? We aren't the only ones who think this way. Many sources suggest a unibody platform. Moreover, they usually suggest the TNGAC platform, which underpins some of the smallest models in Toyota's range, including the world's best-selling car, the Corolla, and its SUV iteration, known as the Corolla Cross. That compact SUV could borrow many parts from the new Landhopper, and there is no doubt that riding on such a platform would bring many benefits, not just in terms of on-road driving manners, but also in terms of the implementation of advanced technologies, particularly hybrid powertrain. It's no secret that most sources were suggesting that such a small Land Cruiser would feature an all-electric setup, and while that will most likely happen at one point in the future, we are pretty sure that the initial versions would rather feature hybrid powertrains. And that's where the close relation with Corolla Cross pays off because the Landhopper would get a couple of pretty efficient but also decently capable powertrain options. Of course, both would be based on a 2.0-liter inline-4, with the base model featuring a classic self-charging hybrid setup, which adds a pretty capable electric motor for a combined output of 196 horsepower. Nearly 200 horsepower seems quite good for a vehicle of this size, but we expect to see a plug-in hybrid version as well, a version that would feature a much bigger battery and therefore a more capable electric motor for a total output of 220 horsepower and a decent all-electric range, which could easily go over 30 miles. Despite the unibody platform and the road-friendly ride quality, the Land Hopper would still be an off-roader, so we count on all kinds of quintessential off-road features. First of all, there is the matter of ground clearance, which should be quite respectable, just like the approach and departure angles. Furthermore, there is the matter of tires, which look pretty massive on the teaser image. Underbody protection, as well as body cladding, seem like a certain thing. On the other hand, what Toyota needs to solve is the four-wheel drive. Namely, with a hybrid powertrain, this could be easily solved by adding another electric motor to the rear axle. But as a genuine off-road, we think that the Landhopper deserved a more conventional solution, a classic drive shaft and differential. Along with that, the small SUV would also get a locking differential, or at least a limited slip differential. Of course, the Landhopper would also get a couple of off-road features based on electronics, such as various traction control modes, hill descent control, etc. One thing is for sure, the all-new Landhopper, or whatever Toyota decides to call it, is in development. At this point, we can't say much about the launch date, but most sources suggest it's coming sometime in the next year. As for the price, some earlier estimations suggested a super affordable SUV, which would start at around twenty dollars or $25,000. More recent estimations are way more realistic, and they suggest a base price between thirty dollars and $35,000. But we presume Toyota will come up with more precise details regarding the release date and price in the near future. What do you think about the new Toyota Land Hopper? Let us know in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.